Hi, today is Thursday, May 11th, 2017, and this is a Swedish piece. And this Thursday has been a very violent one in Sweden, so we have to say a few words about that, or I have to say a few words about that. And, uh, well, first of all, uh, the 27 year old substitute teacher uh, was murdered on open street in Gothenburg. He was uh, studying to become a teacher and for some reason he was uh, he was murdered on open street in Gothenburg. Uh, a 19 year old man was shot in Malmö in the south of Sweden and seven persons have been arrested for attempted murder. So I suppose this means he didn't die. But at least not yet. Let's hope he doesn't either. And a beauty salon in Tensta, uh, a suburb of Stockholm, was robbed. Uh, two men robbed, uh, robbed the store using something res resembling a gun. And then they, they ran away. It is at least a few minutes ago, they still didn't know if they really got any, anything from the robbery. And those were just three stories that came out of Sweden today that happened today. So today has been a violent first day in Sweden, which is really, really sad and not surprising. Uh, a few years ago, a Swedish politician uh, said something about how Sweden now had turned into a new and exciting country, the new exciting Sweden. Of course, uh, those of us who are not uh, utopian progressivists and... Uh, crazy naive left-wingers picked up on this and started using it sarcastically. So whenever things like this happen, we sort of go, yeah, new exciting Sweden. We'd like to get that boring old Sweden back. The one, the one we knew. The one we grew up in. And uh, you want to know why? Or you know, you want to know what? I mean, the country I grew up in was, was not perfect. There was a lot of things about that country that wasn't good. Sweden was borderline socialist. I grew up with two TV channels and uh, Sweden was pretty close to, to the outside world. Swedish teachers went to East Germany to on excursions and they got their trips paid for by the East German government and then they came back to Sweden to teach us these in their own mind wonderful ideas. I think I was a little, hap a little lucky that uh, the teachers I had for the first six years of my life were both Christians. Although I think the first one of them was the more serious one. So I was probably a little happy, lucky when it comes to that. And from my grandparents I got some conservative values instilled. So I was sort of vaccinated. And I didn't go to preschool. There are a lot of things that I think made sure I wouldn't, um, wouldn't get as much of the indoctrination as most other Swedes of my generation did. It has, it has hurt a large part of my generation. The Swedish generation X is really a relativistic one, with some exceptions, with some exceptions to that rule. Anyway, I digress. The thing is, the things happening, these are the symptoms. I try to report what's going on, and I give you my, my analysis of it. And this is my analysis. The violence, I don't know who did this. I have no idea what it's connected with. If it was just random violence, if it was uh, gang related, if it's something else, I do not know. But I know this. I blame the left. I blame the relativists of the left. I blame the do-gooders who for 50 years or maybe even longer has been going on about how crime, <coughs> crime is caused by socio-economic factors. And we should understand this and we should be nice to, to the criminals and we should love them and then maybe they will who start acting, acting better and stop doing this stuff. You know what, dear left? It doesn't work. Yes, I'm all for second chances. I am for that people can, can take their punishment and they can get a second chance and do better. I'm all for that. What I'm not for is the crazy ideas of the, well, of the left of the left. These people studying sociology and, and then occupying the left. I mean, the old left, they were at least working class. They wouldn't put up with this garbage. But then we got the new left, and this started somewhere around 1968. When, 
with, with all these people in the universities who would get this cultural radicalism and they would infiltrate the left-wing parties. Olof Palme is just a very, very good example, but he's not the only one. And I don't only blame the political left in Sweden. I also blame the right. I mean, because the right in Sweden isn't right-wing. They are, in any important way, they are cultural radicals. And they, they have accepted the worldview of the left in so many ways. So you are to blame too. And I don't know how to put it in a nice way. But if you're voting for parties who are defending this, who are excusing this, who are saying that we, we, we need to understand why people do this. They do this because of socioeconomic factors. They do this because they, they don't feel like a part of society. If you do that, please stop. Please stop voting for stupid parties like that. And uh, that's really all I have to say about this right now. Uh, and uh, if you like this channel uh, well first of all I would like to thank the people who are supporting this channel through prayers through patreon through paypal that's greatly appreciated and if you like this channel please subscribe uh, so you don't miss anything please share my videos on uh, social media on facebook and twitter I have now reached and surpassed 1000 subscribers and thank, thanks everyone who helped me to get this far Please help me carry on further, and if you got something to say, feel free to comment. If you like this video, please like it, and uh, I would also like to encourage you to support the channel. And I will include all the necessary information in the information box below. This is a sweet speaks. Have a nice day.